Hi and welcome to the second video of this course. In the previous video, I explained methods for translating a business problem to a data solution. You are now able to recognize a well-stated business problem and explain how your data solution will support solving it. Now that you know the purpose of your data mining task, it is time to gather the data and have a look at the quality. This is the first moment of truth. I have been involved in a lot of data mining projects and until I had actual access to the data, I could say nothing about the scope and feasibility of the project. Bad data quality comes in many forms, annotated Excel files, missing values, exotic file formats, so many surprises. In this video, I will show you how you can access a data source, examine the data structure, and assess data quality. You will probably be familiar with spreadsheet data. This is a very common data format with rows and columns and data points stored in cells. I have stored a spreadsheet file in an online repository. And as you can notice, it has the extension CSV, which stands for comma separated variables. You can actually copy uh, the URL in your browser and check that it's actually a text file where the variables are separated by commas, as you can see here. I will now show you how you can read in the data and do some initial checks on the quality. You can follow along using the notebook that has been attached to the course page. When you open a notebook, please be sure that you run the first code cell with all the imports. Um, by doing so, you're importing all the functions that you're gonna need later on. So as a first, I'll run the top code cell, being sure that all the functions have been loaded. And now we can start. So in the first step, I want to read in the data and I'm gonna put the data in a variable called raw df. Uh, I'm going to use the function, of course, read csv, very appropriate name. And it's as a first parameter, it needs to have a URL that points to the actual data. Uh, so I have to give this, uh, this URL. So I will make a new variable and uh, it's going to be a text string that contains the URL. So I'm going to copy it, put it in here. And of course, then I want to check whether everything went all right and can do that by using the shape method. Well, uh, in a sense, a method is, is a kind of a function. I'm not going to go into details too much. Just, just accept that it's, it's some kind of function. And what it will do, it will uh, give back the number of rows and columns. Well, let's see if this works. Yes, it did. So it gets, gets back the number of rows and columns. So we have a first success. So let me now have a look at the actual data and I want to see the first couple of lines of the data set. <clears throat> and I'm going to use the iLock method. And I need to give uh, the number of rows that I want to return. So let's take the first six rows and the first 10 columns. Let's see. Here we go. So what we see is uh, the first column is called ID. I suppose this, these are patient IDs. Then we have diagnosis with Bs. I know that uh, I looked at uh, the, the description of the data set and diagnosis contains the actual um, form of the tumor, the, uh, the, the cancer tumor. 
uh, it can be B9 for this B, and it can be malignant, uh, and that will be an M. And then we see some measurements of the cells. Um, okay, that's good. So it all looks well. As a next step, I want to assess the quality of the data set, and I'm going to use a describe method or function, which will return some basic statistical parameters like mean and standard deviation. So let's do that. I'm going to call the data set again and use describe, yes, and I'll run this. And so what, what did it do? It took all the numerical variables and calculated uh, statistical param parameters. So it, I see the mean, standard deviation, min, max. So that looks good. And in this phase, in reality, uh, if you're doing a project, it would be a good idea to ask a domain expert to have a look at all these parameters. So you could ask him, does he see any strange values? For instance, an unrealistically high mean or a maximum. Um, the advantage of doing this together with a domain expert is that in case of an anomaly, he often can make an educated guess what caused it. Another thing I need to do is check the data types of certain variables. Remember that we want to build a model that can predict the diagnosis, our label, based on the measurements, the features. And our label only can take two values, B9 or malignant. So in this case, we will use a classification model. And that means that the data type of our model needs to be of type category. And I can see the data types by using the info function. So I'm again calling the data set and applying the info function on it. And let's run this and then have a look at the data type. So I'm interested in diagnosis, our label, and it of data type object, uh, which is just a string. And that's not what we need. We need to make it category. So how can we do that? To change the data type of our label, we need to revisit the function for reading in the data. So let's do that here. Let's go back. So we need to go back to this function. And there's a second parameter that we can set. There are many parameters, as you can see, that you can set. But what we want to set is the D type, the data type. And uh, what we want to set is the diagnosis variable. And it needs to be, oh, and it needs to be of type category. Did it do that properly? Yes. So I'm going to run everything again. You see that nothing changed here. It still gives back the number of rows and columns. Uh, but if we run info again now, and we see first it was object, it should be now category. So it worked. Excellent. Uh, another way of assessing data quality is through visual inspection. So by building visuals charts. Uh, and as we have, we can see we have a lot of numerical data. So uh, a, a useful chart would be a scatter plot. So let's, let me do that. Um, I'm going to store this again in a variable. So the whole chart will be uh, stored in a, in a, in a variable, and I call it the fig from figure. And um, for this, I'm going to need a PX package, and it contains a scatter function. As a first thing, I need to give it, I see here, a data frame. Oh, well, we have that. We have the raw data frame, DF. So we can put that in here. Then it needs to know what, what sh which variable should be put on the x-axis. So x will equal, and let's pick the first numerical one, it's radius mean. So radius underscore mean. 
and it needs a Y. And let's take then the second one, the texture mean. Let's see whether this works. Oh no, first I have to, because I will run it and you'll see that nothing happens, actually, because uh, now the only thing that happened that is that the whole chart is now in memory uh, stored under the variable fig. And we need to actually now show what's in there by using the show function. And yes, we have a scatter plot. Now, what do I see? So I see texture mean on the y axis, I see radius mean on the x axis, and I see a lot of markers, points. Uh, if you move your mouse over it, you see the, the various values, x and y, but nothing more. I see it spread out, but doesn't give me any more information. So how can we add more information to it? Well, what if I give, if I distinguish between B9 and malignant using colors? So I'll set color and I'll just point to the variable that contains all the labels here. Let's see what happens. Oh yes, wow, great. So we see, we can now see which points are uh, related to the B9 rows and the red ones are the malignant records. So that's that's more useful, yeah. Okay, can we do more? Uh, maybe we can add another variable to it uh, by changing the size um, of the markers. Let's see what that will give and which one will we use. Let me use the, we have texture, so I'll use parameter mean. Parameter mean. What would that do? Oh yes, okay. So that's that's also even, gives even more information. Okay. Uh, in the quiz there will be some questions on, on actually what you actually can see uh, using this visual inspection. But let's do another one. I'm going to copy this one and I'll copy it in the next cell. And we're just going to change the variables. So we had radius mean and texture mean and I'm going to use which one? Now let's take the next one. So we'll take or we'll skip one. I'll use smoothness, like this, here, and we're gonna, we need to delete the white space, very important, otherwise we'll get an error. So I said smoothness and then a compactness mean, and let's take concavity. It's gonna be a surprise. I don't know what's going to happen, but it's going to be beautiful. Oh yes, great. So, good visual, nice visual. All right. So, well, maybe you could experiment with some other variables uh, and see what it uh, what it returns.